from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they really love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Thanks for being with us. Chris is with us in Dallas, Texas, to start this hour. Hi, Chris. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. What's up? So I'm a high school senior right now taking just kind of a personal finance class, and I was just wondering if you're concerned about how, you know, the national debt reaching $30 trillion and how that should affect just our overall personal finance strategy. Mm. Well, I'm sorry, it, as a high school senior, you're having to worry about such things. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I've got a long history of fretting and alternately being angry about the uh, national debt being out of control mainly because it represents a Congress that's out of control, and we don't seem to have the backbone in the American people to vote the bozos out. So they yes. keep spending like there's no tomorrow. And um, everybody's a little bit lazy about it, so it just keeps going and going and going. So, yeah, I'm with you. It, it's bothersome. It's um, Obviously, there's a tipping point somewhere. Um, I will tell you that the uh, end of the world has been predicted as long as I can remember due to the national debt or due to whatever other boogeyman you want to come up with. And um, I actually read a book uh, when I was a little bit older than you called Bankruptcy 1984 that predicted that the national debt was going to hockey stick and the nation would collapse in 1984. Obviously, that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there was another book that a friend of mine wrote called The Coming Economic Earthquake, predicting the exact same thing in the same decade. Mm, he was wrong. Uh, I had another friend of mine wrote a book about the end of the world due to Y2K. Do you know what that is, Chris? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Year 2000. Yeah, exactly. When the computers all turned over, the world was going to come down and the... Yes. Uh, the uh, uh, we were a little bit worried that the entire electric electronic grid would collapse. And uh, a lot of people bought, bought water and bullets and uh, all kinds of things to get ready for the end times. And the uh, New Year's Eve came and went and nothing happened except three days later, the stock market went through the roof <laughs> up. And yes. so uh, I just I, I, I have honestly, I'm not making fun completely, but I look back on all the things I've worried about and none of them have happened. So. Um, I think it's bad because I think it represents a lack of discipline on the American people's part and on our quote unquote representatives part. I think it's pitiful. It's outrageous. Uh, but does it affect my investing? Not a dime, not a dime. I don't sit and worry about it. I invest based on good long-term track records because the debt's been out of control as long as I've been alive. And, uh, so I've been investing and investing and investing. If it ever absolutely fell in on itself there's not anything you could have invested in except bullets that would protect you <laughs> so i wouldn't i wouldn't fret about it um and the next time someone come you know comes to me and one of the other things i'll just as a side note for our listeners out there and for jay jade may not know this about me um it is one of the things i have vowed that when i get old i am not going to be one of those financial guys that writes an end times book <laughs> Because most people in my world, you know, we go along, we teach people yeah. to get wealthy, we teach them about all this, and then we get n enough knowledge that this stuff starts concerning us, and so we write the end of the world book, uh -huh. and it's coming soon, usually when we get old. And I've just vowed, I'm not, even if I'm tempted, I'm not going to write it. As a matter of fact, I've even told my publishing team to refuse to publish it, if I did write it. So <laughs> if you have a moment, keep and a, me a from making judgment. the mistake of doing it to myself. <laughs> burn, burn the manuscript. Yeah. <laughs> Throw it in the fire. <laughs> just it, it, it apparently um, takes more than a single president being a moron. Because we've had multiple mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it takes more than, than I think it takes to co collapse this thing called America. 
Yeah. And, you know, I, I remember thinking that when X or Y president got elected way back there, mm-hmm. like before some of you were born, that that was it. That's a sign. It's over. Yeah. Jesus is coming, you know, and he didn't. And we didn't die. And the nation survived the idiocy in the White House. That's true. And the lack of morality in the White House and the whatever in the White House. And, and you know, we'll survive. um Whatever we're going through right now, it's just we're That's more true. resilient than I than I think we think we are in the middle of the night when we wake up scared. That's a really good point, Dave. I do think that we're resilient as people and also as a nation. And a lot of this stuff is so cyclical. You know, the sky is falling and then somebody comes and does, you know, one or two things that are just, you know, whatever. And everybody does a big, deep breath. And then somebody else comes and they spend more and it's like, oh, you know, I think all this stuff just goes in a big wheel. And, uh, you know, for your own peace, sometimes you just got to let it let it remain external and not let it get into you so much. Yeah. And and when you look back on it, you go, you know, it. I, it was it was a lot bigger deal in my head. Yeah. I mean, you talk to somebody who lived during the Great Depression. Yeah, that that was real. Yeah. I I find in, in moments like this, when you just look back. And go, okay, it, it gives you a little bit of perspective to go, okay, this is this is not any crazier than any other moment in history. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and yeah, I think the, um, you know, what is different is access to conspiracy theories. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> yeah. It's the social the, media. The internet, I mean, because it used to be you had to really work to find kooks. That's right. And now they are delivered to you because you've been looking at other kooks. And so the algorithm sends you a whole list of kooks. Oh, it'll just you put know? it up in you your got, feed. You don't get yeah. stuck in the kooky algorithm and you're going to get <laughs> lit up with kooks. And That's so, right. you know, if you think the world's coming to an end and you type that in about three times, yeah. you're going to have a lot of incoming in time stuff showing up on your desktop. And yeah. all of a sudden you're going to start to believe the dead gum world's coming to an end. And it's the same thing as, you know, again, when I started all of this a million years ago, we didn't have the inputs. You know, mm-hmm. the the moral of the story is there is a moral to the story we're going to finally get there watch your inputs that's so good dave you know you become what you consume and who you hang around with yep so are you watching the news 24 7 right you're going to be pissed off all the time because it used to just be that it was fox news msnbc and you go you know it used, I used to, to be g- walter cronkite and you had to wait till six o'clock. Well, then that, there's that. That too. was it. And then you got twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. And then you got twenty four seven. Both sides of the political spectrum. Yep. Uh, yelling at each other. Yep. Um, and now you got YouTube, Instagram, and all. And it's not yeah. even it's not even real news outlets anymore. No, it's, it's just not, it's, it's not. just it's not, it's not telling real, you. It's not even real yeah. news. The stuff that we call news now we used to call tabloid. Oh, true that. I well, mean, I can go on there and make news, and somebody listen to me. Well, there you go. You cause cause a little cause a little ruckus. Sir. I might have to. Just Only I'll tell you ruckus. the truth. I won't be out here telling you fake news. I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. Buying a home is one of the biggest decisions of your life. You need a partner like Churchill Mortgage. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country and they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Churchill works with you to build a mortgage the Ramsey way. One that doesn't bust your budget, sets you up for financial success and helps you get out of debt faster. Go to churchillmortgage.com today and get started. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Um, there's been consistent focus on and funding for traditional subjects in the world of education, like math and science, but there's been a consistent lack 
of focus on common sense stuff like personal finance education in the classroom. Uh, kids have to memorize the periodic table, but they can't balance a checkbook. Ooh. They don't know how to stay out of debt. The Financial Literacy Crisis in America 2023 report focuses on the lack of personal finance education in America. However, uh, we come to the rescue with Ramsey Solutions Foundations in Personal Finance taught now in 48% of the high schools. But here's what the key findings of this report said. 88% of U.S. adults said high school did not leave them fully prepared. Three in four U.S. adults said the years after high school, they often or sometimes felt stressed because of money, lack of knowledge. Mm. Well, that's just everybody. Yeah, that is everybody. (laughs) <laughs> no, that, that's not, you didn't need to spend a bunch of money on that research. <laughs> All you got to do is talk to about four people and you can figure out that we're not taught this stuff in school anymore. Mm-hmm. From the first time I wrote the little blue version of financial peace and I carried it around the trunk of my car. One of the first times I ever set it out on a table after I spoke and I went back to work the book table and mm-hmm. sell my little book for $12. From then on, people would come back there and go, you know, they should teach this stuff in schools. Uh-huh. It's come up from day one of me starting this stuff 30 years ago. And so we are. And guess what? This month is Financial Literacy Month. Woohoo! Hey, hey. Love it. And to do that, uh, to celebrate that, we're going to honor a bunch of teachers. And uh, so what we're going to be doing in this process is we have the Ramsey Teacher Appreciation Giveaway, sponsored by the Army National Guard. We think teachers are heroes. As a matter of fact, we're downright sure of it. So one teacher, no purchase necessary, will win a $5,000 vacation. Wow. That's nice. Yeah. Because you need a vacation, I'm telling you. And two more teachers are going to win a $3,000 vacation of their choosing. You can go wherever you want to go. We're going to fund it, uh, along with help from our friends at the Army National Guard. So uh, way to go, teachers. So the giveaway ends April 30th. No purchases necessary, but you've got to be a teacher to register. Or if you register and you're not a teacher, you're not going to get it. So there you go. Get your name in the running. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash teacher. Tell teachers you know to come and register to RamseySolutions.com slash teacher because we are definitely giving somebody a sweet vacation. That's what we want to do there. That's nice. And they get to choose where they want to go, too. It's not like all expenses paid to... <laughs> some some place in, some in the Caribbean thing that I got you've a never... discount on. Yeah, that's no, no, it didn't happen. Just $5,000, real dollars, and we're going to give you that exact amount, and you're going to go towards your a place of your choosing. Dale is with us in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Dale. How are you? Doing good. Hey, I had a question about using land um, as a down payment and what your are on that. Uh, help help me right walk now. me through so we, a down payment for what? A house. So when I talked to Churchill Mortgage, they said that we could use the land, our five acres. It's free and clear um, as a collect, like as our down payment. Oh, okay, absolutely. And actually, you don't have a choice. Oh, okay. You, you have okay. to. You have to. Because here's how it works. All right, you're going to take out a construction loan, and they're going to take a lien against the property that the house is being built on, which happens to be this land. So now the land is wrapped into the deal immediately. And when the construction is finished and the construction loan has fully funded the building of the property, you will will then put in place what's called a takeout loan. You're going to take out the construction loan with the permanent mortgage uh, that pays off the construction loan uh, and is in the amount of the construction loan. And guess what? The equity, the total house will be worth X, which includes the land. And you end up with just the mortgage at the end of the story. And so it has worked its way into becoming the down payment because it's in your equity at that point. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's already more equitable. Is that Mm, what you're saying? (laughs) No, I'm saying that, okay, okay, the 5,000 or the five acres is worth what? Um, About 70,000. Okay. And what are you going to spend on the build? Um, Probably about 200. Okay. And that two hundred is probably going to be worth two fifty actual appraisal when you complete it, because you're building it, right? Okay. Right. And so you're going to have two seventy in the property, or I'm sorry, no, you're going to have a mortgage of two hundred, but you're going to have a value of um, two fifty of about three twenty. The equity is the difference. 
So you'll actually only oh, have okay. 200 200,000 in the whole package when you're done. But mm -hmm. because the 70 acres is paid for and because you're building it for less than appraisal, I'm sure, I'm sure you're not paying full appraisal to build a property, uh, you're going to end up <laughs> with about a $320,000 property that you only owe 200 on. The difference is 70,000, that's called your equity. Okay. And All so, right, that makes sense. and so you see what happened is the land ended up being like a 70,000, the land and the better deal on the house ended up being like a $70,000 down payment. Okay. That's, and so like we have some money set aside already like for down payment. So we, I mean, no, it's okay. Go ahead and put that down too. That just, that means you're just okay. going to borrow even less and have a larger equity, but you're going to have less debt because we want to get this house paid off as soon as possible. Okay. How so, much have you got to set no, aside? Not much. We just finished paying off debt, so only about 10000 right now. But I was just curious what your thoughts were on that. Is it above your emergency fund? Um, no, we have a different emergency fund. Yeah. We have fifteen in emergency fund. Okay. So you have your emergency fund plus 10000 So, yeah, put the 10000 or any other money you can scrape together while you're building, and that makes you end up with less than a $200,000 mortgage, thus more equity equity dale is value of the property the whole property minus what you owe that's your equity that's what you call that at what point dave let me let me take this question one point further because so we're talking about a two hundred thousand dollar loan 70k for the land is there a ratio land to home value that you would say hey that land is not gonna i want you to put cash with that yeah do you see what i'm saying yeah you're you're uh, unless you're on a huge tract of land, mm -hmm. uh, and five acres is not, mm -hmm. unless you're on like 300 acres or something, or, or in a very expensive tract of land, um, uh, an unusual property, you, you would uh, a good rule of thumb in the building world is don't let your lot be more than about 20% of the total picture. Interesting. Okay. That's and a good so, rule of thumb. And so if you had a half a million dollar project mm -hmm. total, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't want your lot to be more than 100000 that's good. Twenty percent of that, and so um, and she's she's right around twenty yeah. percent is where she ends up. So it, it, again, it ends if the lot's paid for, it ends up having the net effect to her question of having put down twenty percent, right? Because her mortgage is she's going to have more than a twenty percent or, or, or less than an eighty percent loan to value, mm -hmm. more than twenty percent equity. So she's going to avoid PMI, mm -hmm. private mortgage insurance. It's the same rule that we would say for. Any a, other a regular purchase, purchase, but this involves a com a construction loan with a permanent mortgage as a takeout. Yeah, yeah, and so that's that's very very good. And it's a very standard transaction. There's nothing to be afraid of here. That's a very normal process. Mm -hmm. The construction uh, loan will not increase except as you pay the builder, and the builder will not get paid unless they meet certain milestones. They'll get a certain amount at the foundation. They'll get another certain amount when they finish the framing. They'll get an another certain amount when the roofing goes on, when the rough end is done on the mechanicals. Mm -hmm. And so there's about five, in a typical construction, there's about five break points. As the construction goes along, they'll issue a little bit more, a little mm -hmm. bit more. Put you a little bit more in debt, but the house is a little bit more higher percentage of completion. Sure. And so it, it's doled out to the builder, and it's very standardized. It's very careful. They, they you know, they're not going to do it unless they can prove that the framing package is up. Yeah. You know, you, builder doesn't get draws on something that hasn't happened. In other words. And, I like that. Uh, so, and then you don't end up in a in a pinch. So uh, that, that's where we're going. That's a really good question, Dale. It is. The thing a lot of people are looking at right now in this world today. So very fun. Very fun. Love it, love it, love it. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. This is The Ramsey Show. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have 
was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility. Because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Thanks for joining us, America. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. If you're new to all this Ramsey stuff, and we know some of you are, a bunch of you are, based on our increase in ratings, our increase in rankings recently, um, one way to find out what in the flip we're talking about is go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out exactly where you are and what your next best steps are. And we'll plug you into your plan, your journey, and you'll start learning some of the lingo from around here, some of the vernacular. And we'll show you how to go win with this. We literally have shown millions how. Click Get Started. It's free at RamseySolutions.com. Brad's in Denver. Hey, Brad, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for making my uh, making time to make uh, take my call. Sure. How can we help? Um, well, thank you so much. I, uh, my question is, is, um, I've got about $650,000 in cash Wow! in the bank. And, um, where'd you what, get that? What, uh, <laughs> well, we, uh, we actually saved a lot of it and part of it was inheritance as well. So, um, the, the, the big thing for me is I've been listening for year for years and I know that you said, hey, take it slow and really educate yourself on, you know, what you want to do with the money. Mm -hmm. And so I, I've scheduled uh, an appointment with one of your Investor Pro mm -hmm. uh, investors here locally. Mm -hmm. But I also, my wife and I have been wanting to start a business of our own in commercial real estate, specifically in self-storage. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to use all of it. I just want to use a certain percentage of it as part of the diversification strategy mm -hmm. and then the other part of it in investments. And so I just wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, the best way of how to, I guess, diversify that amount of money. Okay. How long have you had this inheritance? Like, when did you receive it? Um, about two years ago. Okay. So you've sat on it for a while. So yep. um, tell me about the self-storage thing. Um, so my family, um, my parents uh, had their own business and um, actually had um, some commercial buildings um, that they operated. Mm -hmm. And probably about 10 years ago, they handed it over to uh, the kids, including myself, my brother and sister. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually a 33% owner in that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so learned a lot about commercial real estate in that, but mm -hmm. we're very conservative. We, we just kind of keep that separate. Mm -hmm. um, one of the buildings that we had, um, we sold. And so part of the proceeds, we as kids got distributions from that. And that was really kind of just um, an opportunity for us to, or at least my dad's heart was, hey, it, this can help you accelerate your retirement strategy in your yeah. plan. Yeah. Okay. But I haven't moved forward with it because I don't want <laughs> okay, so, to. But, but as far as bigger. doing mini storage or self storage, what, yeah. what what price range are you looking at a property? Well, the big thing I was thinking of is an RV boat storage facility. So, you know, just understanding, you know, if it's a couple acres, maybe worth uh, a half a million to maybe a million dollars. I, I'm still doing research, 
But yeah. I think the thought is is that if, if you can put about 65 units on one acre of land um, where it generates maybe about $100,000, maybe $150,000 of gross revenue, you know, after expenses, I think the net operating income that we've kind of looked at mm-hmm. would probably be half of that. Um, and so, you know, part of it is kind of the strategy and the thought so of... So you're talking about buying a piece of property with debt. Yeah, either acquire one or actually um, buy a piece of land and then build it up from there. Okay. All right. Well, I um, own a bunch of commercial real estate. I own a bunch of residential real estate. I don't borrow money. You probably knew that, though, didn't you? Yes. Okay. (laughs) So I'm not going to instruct you as a method of building wealth to take half of your 650000 or half of your 700000 and put it into a down payment. No, I would not do that. Um, I would pay cash for the property. Uh, I'm a fan of self-storage. Uh, the, the, cash, uh, the cash on cash returns on it are astronomical, uh, a little higher hassle factor than a lot of rentals, and certainly a lot of commercial property. But um, you basically got to have somebody running it, as, you know, in most cases. Um, I have some pretty incredible technology, one of the two, um, and we've looked at both, um, looked at a couple of those deals for ourselves, as a matter of fact, but we pay cash for investments, Brad. So, um, that's going to change the discussion here. Um, uh, cause I'm not going to tell you to go into debt to do this because as you know, things don't always work the way they work when you lay them out on paper. That's true. I mean, he talked about splitting up the money and doing some towards investments and some on the storage. I wonder if he just said, I'm going to go all in on the storage and find some, you know, find a piece that's half a million. He said half a million to a million. So maybe if he can find the one that's half a million, yeah. he can pay cash. Pay cash and then put 700,000. I mean, put the other, you know, yeah. put 100,000 in improvements and then uh-huh. 100,000 in mutual funds and then just take your cash flows and let's let's build that cash back up with the cash flows. Yeah. That's not a bad idea there. No. Um, uh, especially since you're dealing with, if you're dealing with boat and RV storage, uh, you're not dealing with a ton of improvements usually. It's just that's a true. chain link fence. I mean, yeah. You know, so, um, but yeah, I, th- that's probably the angle I would end up going here, Brad, because I'm going to have to figure out a way to do the, the type of deal that I want to do, but do it with all cash. I don't borrow money. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to tell you to do something I wouldn't do. That's also going to make his, his, his um, revenue... And what he he's earning off of that because he said gross he'd pull in about 150 and then he'd keep half of it. Right. So if he's not having to if he's not mortgaging any, if you're, not having, to, having yeah, a, if you're not having to service yeah. the debt, it obviously increases your cash more. flow. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Good point. All right, Anselm is with us in San Jose. Hey, Anselm, how are you? Doing all right. Thank Good. you. Good. How can we help? Um, I've been just trying to figure out like the whole investment process. Um. And I'm kind of in the process of the, uh, you know, investing 15% of uh, income and or trying to buy a house. I live in the, you know, one of the most expensive places in the United States. Yes, you do. So even a decent house is like a million dollars plus. Mm-hmm. So. Um, How old are you? Should I? In, uh, 29. What do you make? Uh, in, uh, well, it keeps increasing kind of a lot. Last year was... Uh, about 144 in this year's uh about i'm going to guess about 170 180 good good for you um, what do you do accounting revenue excellent okay. so what's the question exactly um well i'm i'm able to save you know a decent amount of money mm-hmm. but it's like you know down payment uh is is a, is a lot. Yeah. Um, and, um, are you I just discouraged? Cause it's like, going to take you a while. I, yeah. It's, it's like, it could take five years. Um, I maybe could reduce it by a year if I invest less. It's, do you have a family? Um, it's just you. Uh, it's me and my wife. You and your wife. Um, what yeah. dish? And then, so the one uh, seventy is that including her income or is that just yours? That's basically just mine. Okay. Well, what um, does she make? She, she uh, is potentially going to make around one forty if she can get a nursing job. So she's not uh, working yet. Currently, not working yet. Yeah. All right. Is she just finishing nursing school? Yeah, she just finished. 
Dude, uh, she can get a nursing job in about in 20 two minutes. Seconds, yeah. She passes her board. She's mm-hmm. going to be employed as soon as she wants to be. Now you got a three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand dollar household income. Shut up and save yes, a down payment. Save it up. It's just the two of you guys, and it's going to take some time. You're not going to get, you know, you're not going to be done in six months. It might take a little bit, you know, it's going to take longer. But here's the thing: you want the house, so the time is going to pass right. anyway. So just start saving up, start cutting expenses, and you might have to kind of, depending on how quickly you want this to go, you can decide how intense you want to get with this. I yeah. mean, you can go scorched earth or you can just go la da you know, and, and make it a stroll in the park and it's going to take you five years. Yeah. I mean, you can make it take you 10 years, yeah. but you can make it take you just a couple of years, too. You guys are making bank. Yes, you're yeah. an expensive market, but you also have two excellent careers. You're doing a great job of earning. And now what you're facing is, oh, we want to do big girl and big boy stuff like uh-huh. buy houses instead of play. Oh, we have to stop the playing so we can do that. Oh, there it is. This there it is. is the Ramsey Show. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Madeline's with us in St. Louis. Hi, Madeline. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? I am losing faith. Um, excuse me. I just feel like this is never going to end. This debt is so big. Mm. And, and I'm just, I'm frustrated and... I want to do a debt free scream so bad, and it just it feels like it will never come. How can I keep going? Mm. How long you been in this, Madeline? Uh, well, off and on for like five years, but we've been gazelle this whole year. We have decreased our debt by eighty thousand this year. Way to go! But it feels eighty thousand like in one year. We, my husband, we had saved a bunch. My husband had a great paying job. We've been working hard, both of us. But I just don't know that I can do this for another two years, potentially. Hmm. How much debt have you got left? We have two hundred twenty-one thousand in student loans and a hundred and twenty thousand on our mortgage. Okay, your mortgage is not in the intense side, That's so right. you got the two twenty-one to deal with. What do you guys make? You currently have two twenty-one in student loans. I do. Mine alone. We paid off my husband's this year, just last month, actually. Very good. What do you, what do you all do for a living? I'm a chiropractor. I'm self-employed, and he's a nurse. So what's your household income? Last year, we um, grossed about 250 What will you make this year? He is in between jobs, and so and my income fluctuates, and that's the hardest part. Wait a minute. Why is he in between jobs? He's a nurse. He, um, he, they did away with his one job that was very well paying. So now he's waiting to hear for another job that is a local travel so that he can be home every night. With How us, long has he been waiting? Um, he just applied this past week. He accepted a position. He's waiting for a religious exemption to go through so he does not have to get vaccinated. Mm. How long has he been waiting? Um, two days. Two How long months. has he been out of work? He's not currently out of work. He's working weekends part time right now until he gets this full time. I was going to say so. Okay, so the the facts are that he hasn't lost much income. No. Okay, so the facts are you guys are going to make three hundred k this year. We hope to. No, there's no reason you shouldn't. No, no, you are. Okay. Yeah. You can't let, uh, you know, the, uh, all these ifs, ands, and buts. The, the fact is you got a job, and of course your income fluctuates. You're self-employed. But that didn't change. And the fact is he's a nurse, which means he can get employed in about 30 seconds, and he just proved that. Yes. Yeah. So the fact is you're not in trouble at all. You got a stinking $300,000 potential income. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Way to go. And you've been, you yeah. said you've been gazelle intense for one year, right? Um, just this year, actually, just the last couple of months. Oh, 
So you're going to be right on track from the point of you getting gazelle intense. You're going to be right on track with everybody else who's, you know, debt free in 18 to 24 months. OK, so I'm I'm um, a little bit confused or something that you're not telling us. Mm hmm. Well, I want to know about the, she said they've been at this for, you know, I think you said four or five years, but you just got intense. I want to know about those years. What was going on with that? My, hus my husband just got on board this year. We, we started financial peace at the okay, beginning but of the year. Stop, stop, stop a second. Here's what I'm struggling with, and you need to help me, okay? You make $300,000 a year. Your husband's got a new job, and you have 221 to go. You've just proven that you can do 80000 in what period of time? How long did that take? About four months. Good God. Yeah. Okay. So we just did 80000 in four months. And um, four months is not exactly I'm out of steam and I've lost hope. I don't understand where this, the tears and the, I'm not saying you shouldn't have them. I just don't understand where it's coming from. Why would you be hopeless? You should be like Rocky right now. You paid off eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> you make three hundred. You should be like doing a touchdown dance. I know. So what? Where's all well, this? Where's all this hopelessness come from? We had a kind of an unfair advantage. We sold our truck. We sold. We we really just like went hard as soon as we took the financial piece. We sold the truck. We had a little Good. in savings. That's what gave us. The, That's what you're supposed to do. At the beginning of I'm the not year. saying you yes, can maintain now, eighty over four months, but yeah. we know we can maintain a hundred and fifty over a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you I make three hundred like and you lived on one fifty, that'd be a hundred and fifty towards debt in a year. Uh huh. Which you can do in your area. Yes. It feels like I'm giving my life to this, and I'm struggling. You are. Better. On my hey, you better. You better. You're $221,000 in debt. You better give your life to I it. I know. I know. Hold but on. What about my hold child? on. Hold on. Hold on. Here it is. You're tired from before. You were tired from before trying to get your husband on board, and, and you're letting that make you tired now. But that was gone. That's in the past. And now you guys have a new lease on life. He's on board. He's on the plan. You did. You got intense. You paid off $80,000. And don't forget what I just told you. Now you're just like everybody else. You're on the 18 to 24 months plan. You can live on 150 and put the other 150 on your debt, and you're going to be out of this in no time. This is the walk. There's not an easy button to press, uh, Madeline. This is the walk. There is sacrifice. There is, you do feel tired. I, I can't, yeah. you can't wave a wand and get out of that part. But, um, but I there is real hope. Absolutely. I mean, if you can't be out of debt in 24 months, making 300 and you can't pay off 100 a year, 150 a year for two years and be done in 24 months. Uh huh. I, I mean, we, somebody needs to come smack you. You need to do this. This is doable. <laughs> the math is doable. This is not hopeless okay. at all. Mm -hmm. When you started this, I thought you were going to tell me you made twenty-two thousand a year and owed four hundred. I didn't too. know this way it sounded, but this is not mm -hmm. hopeless at all. The math on this is easy. Yeah, but it's you. I mean, yes, you're signing up for a pain in the butt eighteen to twenty-four, but at least you'll be free forever when you finish. Forever. Yes. You can do this. Okay. This is really, really doable. But I think Jade's right. Is she right? You're tired from before, not from now? Yes. Yeah, because this last go round, you hadn't yeah. done enough to be tired. Yeah, no, she was pulling him up the hill before. She was rolling a, 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 a pushing a mountain some, some up the hill. Some dead nurse yeah. weight. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's what it was. But he's on board now. Hooray. You guys are you guys are yeah. finally doing the plan together. Yeah. Now, to the extent that he is not on board or you're not sure he's on board, that would give me pause. Mm -hmm. I would be hopeless then. I would be crying then. Because if you got to drag him all the way through this, you, you may not get through it. You've already figured that part out, right? I think it's just we. I know this is the beginning of a very long. You know, it feels the days feel so long. Yeah, and how I know old are you? We're doing eighteen, thirty-one. Do you have kids? Okay. What were you doing One. when you were twenty-nine? Do you even remember? No. Okay, that's two years ago. Yeah. Two yeah, years I in the know. scope of your life's not spit. Yes, Nothing. it's going to be hard. But yes, it's going to be worth it. And yes, it's doable. And the time is going to pass anyway. And that's the question you have to ask yourself. Are you going to wake up a year and a half, two years from now, and you can wake up two years from now and be in the exact same spot you're in now, or wake up two years from now and be finished? And that's where you need to put your mind. Imagine waking up two years from now, Madeline, having decided it's too hard. We're not going to do it. And you still got 221000 more because it's student loans and the interest is going to come back and it's going to 
tally up. So here's what's happening right this second. Jade and I can see this math and are more excited for you than you are for you. Yes. Right this second. I know. And that's what we're trying to translate I, for you. We're trying to zip some of that excitement over on your side of the aisle. Yeah. Because you need, you need a little zip of that. And we love you. We want you to win. Yes, you're signing up for two years of hard. Or if you don't do it, you're signing up for 20 years of hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're yelling at you because yeah. we know you can do it. Yes, and we don't is, want you to I can see tap it. out. I can see it very clearly where you're going to be. If you and your husband both stick with this, you both do beans and rice, rice and beans. You stop the vacations and the eating out. We have job one. And that's evict this ugly old woman from your house named Sally Mae. She needs to go. <laughs> she's got a wart on the end of her nose. She's a, she's, a, she's a squatter in the bedroom. She needs to go. We need to throw her on her can in the street. <laughs> that's where she needs to go. And it's war, baby. It's war. And you need to declare war and get energy out of that and kick that old woman out. You can do it. The numbers say you can do it. So put all the past tired behind you, embrace the 18 to 24 war, and get her done. You can do this. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Susie is with us in Wyoming. Hi, Susie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? Um, so I, I'm a little nervous. I'm excited to be on. Um, my husband passed away um, about 18 months ago. Oh, I'm and, sorry. Uh, my Lord, how long were you all married, honey? Um, he passed away the day after our 23rd anniversary. Gosh. Wow. I'm so sorry. What happened to him? Um, he had COVID. Oh, ouch. How old was he? Um, he was, um, 43. Whoa. Sorry to hear that. My That's goodness. Tough. Oh, baby girl. How can we help you today? <laughs> Um, well, I, uh, we were never really good at handling money before he passed and, and I have no clue. Um, I don't know what to do with anything money wise now. Yeah. So I'm just hoping for some advice. Where do I even start? (laughs) Are you, uh, are you working? Yes. I'm a Head Start teacher. I teach preschool. Okay. So what do you make? Um, contracted, I make about $34,000 a year. Um, last year we had a few vote bonuses because of COVID stuff. So, um, last year was 42,000, but mm-hmm. how much have you got in bill? How much do you have in debt? Not counting the house. Um, the only debt I have is my student loans. That's about, it's just over 27,000. Okay. Do you rent or, or do you own the house? I rent. How much is your rent? About nine. It's nine hundred dollars a month. Okay. All right. Where is Lovell, Wyoming? What's that close to? Next major city. <laughs> uh, um, we're right up by the border of Montana, um, Billings, Montana. Okay. If you're familiar right. with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Trying to think how I can get how we can get our arms around you and help you walk through this. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, the good news is that uh, we can show you how to do this. 
Um, okay. Uh, and and it, it's not rocket science. You don't have to go get a master's degree in finance. You yeah. just have to say, um, I want to learn how to handle money, and I'm going to do what it takes to do that. Because there's going to be changes okay. involved. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, anytime mm-hmm. we're not managing an area of our life and we start to manage that area of our life, it is an emotional strain. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like I ran into one of my guys who's one of our um, senior guys on our technology team downstairs a while ago, and he's lost 68 mm-hmm. pounds. <whistles> Pretty impressive. <laughs> I told him, I said, man, yeah. I th- you look like you lost a Backstreet Boy. <laughs> and so uh, pretty incredible, you know. And uh, But you know what? To do that, he had to dramatically change his food intake. Agreed? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, yes. And change his exercise regime. Agreed? And to do all of that means that change over what he was doing is emotional, emotionally hard work. And you're going to have to do some of that. Are you okay with that? Yes. <laughs> uh, we can show you how to do it. You're just going to have to do it. And it's, it's at first, learning a new skill of anything, learning a new skill of him eating less or you managing money for the first time is strenuous until you've done it a while. And then it's not strenuous at all. It's automatic. That's right. Well, yeah, because initially you're going against the grain of what you used to do or what's habitual for you to do or what you know to do. But we're going to teach you things that are going to be contrary to that, but ultimately they're going to be the best habits for you. And I'm guessing we're going to give you Financial Peace Absolutely. University. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a nine-week oh. class called Financial Peace University. We're going to give it to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're also okay. going to give you what's called Every Dollar, which is the world's best budgeting app, and it connects to your bank, and it's how you're going to do your budget. Because from today on, you're going to tell money what to do instead of being stressed when it left. Mm-hmm. You're going to make okay. it behave. It's a misbehaving kid, a misbehaving dog, <laughs> and you're going to tell it to go to the, cor- the, the dog to go to the corner and sit, and it's going to learn to sit. You're going to make it behave. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it feels kind of like it's wild, like it's out of control right now, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like it's hard to conquer this thing, and you're going to rise up above it and make it behave, and we're going to show you how. It's doable. Mm-hmm. But um, that, okay. that, that budget is how you're going to do that, uh, among other things, mm-hmm. giving every dollar an assignment before the month begins. And here's what's going to happen. It's going to be very weird for you. You're going to get a sense <laughs> of peace and a sense of power over this money thing that you've never had in your life if you'll do the stuff we teach you. Okay. okay. You can do it. Mm-hmm. You can do it. Anybody that can handle kindergartners can handle money. <laughs> they're a lot harder than money because money money does what it's told it doesn't have any drama it just does what it's told okay Kid, right. kindergartners are full on body drama and so um mm-hmm. it's true yeah for real so the second thing i'm going to do is that we're going to put you on hold you're going to sign up for sign you up we're going to pay for it for financial peace university for every dollar plus and then we're also going to pay for, uh, i think we've got one of our ramsey coaches in billings and uh oh. and we will get a personal coach for you to sit down with you and walk you through all of this as well and all of it's at no charge to you okay oh thank you yeah so uh and and here's the thing you can do this you, you this is the most heartbreaking hard time you've ever been through in your whole life i suspect Yes. Yeah, I'm so sorry. But the the good that'll come out of it is is you're going to get control of money for the first time in your life. And we can yeah. do that for you and that will add peace to the other areas of your life. Yeah. That's why we call our program yeah. financial peace. Yes. If, if we show you how to do all of it, are you going to do it? Uh yes, I will. I'm I'm already committed. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Well, we'll take care of you. And Susie, we're here to help you anytime. You call us as many times as you need to. Call that coach that we're going to set you up with as many times as you need to. You go through those lessons as many times as you need to. There's nine lessons in nine weeks. You can go through them all. You can binge them. You can go back through them, back through them. Sometimes it takes a little while. And stay connected Um, to us, too. Listen to the show. Get in on that Facebook Baby Steps community and surround yourself with people who are doing what you're doing. If you're not plugged into a good church, get in one. 
Uh, those of us that call ourselves Christians, one of uh, the mandates of the good book is to take care of widows and orphans. And that's one of the things we've been doing here for the last five minutes. So we're here for you, kiddo. I'm so sorry. This is The Ramsey Show. Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Jade Washall Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Hey, if you like what you hear, please subscribe to the show, follow the show, uh, leave a five-star review for the show, and share the show. When you do all of those things, it helps us. We need your help. It's a way you can help us. We appreciate you. Let people know that we're here. Gonzola, or Gonzala is with us. Gonzala, how are you? Gonzala, good. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can I help? Well, thank you for what you do. Um, I am six months into a uh, cash value insurance policy. I'm sorry. Life policy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, this was before I started hearing uh, your podcast and the way you feel about that, those, <laughs> those type of insurance. Um, uh, I did stop contributing to my 401 um, to make the payments for this because it's you know the mm. payments about a thousand bucks. Oh gosh! Uh, I do have some um, some of my 401 still um, you know I'm still contributing to it, which is the amount that my employer matches. Mm. So I'm taking advantage of that. So um, I am six months into it, and I wanted to know if um, stick with it or you think I'm better off um, cutting my losses and. Yeah. If you if you had a, a suitcase of money laying in the back seat and the back door flew open and it was flying out, <laughs> what would you do? Uh, I'd probably stop it. Yeah. Yeah, you probably close the door. End it. Yes. That's what's going on. You're getting screwed, yeah. man. Yeah. Big time. It's the world's worst. I mean, the, the whole life is the payday lender of the middle class. It's an absolute mm-hmm. horrible set of mathematics. Mm-hmm. It's the worst investment product on the market by far. The only people Correct. that sell this stuff are the people that sell this stuff. They're the only <laughs> people that believe in it. I mean, all the rest of the financial uh-huh. world looks at this and goes, oh, my God. And um, it's just it's trash. So, yeah, you need to do your investing in real investments, not in something that has a poor rate of return. And when you die, they keep your money. And that's what whole life is. Now, this policy, this whole life policy, before you do get out of it, we want to make sure that you get into a term life policy at the very least. Have you got good term insurance in place already? I have about the same amount of benefit on a couple of separate uh, policies. Mm -hmm. So I I don't necessarily have the need for it. Mm -hmm. Um, The the reason why I went with this was Was having that amount being... Yeah. Tax free, correct, and, and no taxes at the end. That was the selling point, and that's what got me. Um, you know why there's no taxes? At, you know why there's no taxes at the end? Because you're making money, and they mm-hmm. never tax you when you don't make money. Okay, so if you put money in a I'm mutual about, fund and it does not go up in value, there's no taxes at right. the end. Correct. If it goes down in value, there's no taxes at the end. If they take so many fees out of it that the net, net, net to you is no gain, there's no taxes at the end. 
Oh, and by the way, when you borrow money, even if it's your own money you're borrowing, which is what a whole life is, borrowed money never has taxes. You go get a loan at the bank, they don't give you a tax on that loan. There's no income tax on borrowed money, even if you're borrowing your own money. And so if you put a CD in the bank and then you go borrow against the CD and take out a loan, there's no taxes on that. Of course, there's no taxes on borrowed money. So that's the biggest scam in the freaking universe. Uh, there's no taxes. Of course, there's no taxes because it sucks. Anything. Yeah. They don't usually charge you on something that sucks this bad. Yeah. Please, please, sir. Today. Please, please cancel this stuff. <laughs> please cancel it. I hope I haven't been unclear. All right. Matt is in Baton Rouge. Hey, Matt, how are you? I'm doing well, sir. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Mm -hmm. What's up? I just have a quick question. So I'm a relatively new listener, and I started listening just in time to hear you talk about the bank craziness going on. And I'm just curious. This might be a really stupid question, but how can the FDIC insure every deposit under $250,000? Where do they get the money in? I'm not even exactly sure what the FDIC is. Can okay. you give like a brief crash course rundown? Sure. It stands for Federal Deposit insurance corporation it's the federal government writing insurance against your bank's failure now do they have a pile of money equal to everyone's covered amount absolutely not but your insurance company does not have a pile of money equal to everyone at state farm totaling their car this week either if everybody totaled their car at once state farm's gone they don't have that much money. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. What they're running is they're running probabilities, statistical probability mm -hmm. of this occurring. Uh, and so if enough banks went down at one time to destroy the amount of money that the federal deposit insurance corporation, the federal government could get their hands on, uh, that means the entire American economy has collapsed and you should buy a gun. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it's, it's publicly funded. No. Sure. Well, right. it, it, Matt, think yeah. of it like how, how your insurance works. If you have State Farm, everybody's paying their premium and they're paying into this big pile of money so that when uh -huh. somebody needs to actually use their insurance, there's money there. And it's the same thing with FDIC. These insured banks are Paid. paying premiums to FDIC. Okay, so, so the there's a big stack of money. FDIC. The banks fund the FDIC with their premiums, but they don't yes. give it enough money to cover all bank failures that simultaneously occurring. No. Gotcha. But gotcha. it is a lot of money. It's plenty to <laughs> cover plenty. anything that's actually going to occur. Yeah. But if uh, but but the mathematics are, to your point, Matt, uh, the mathematics are just like if all of State Farm autos had a t got totaled in one month, they would. There's not enough. They don't have the money to cover all that because mm -hmm. they're running it on probabilities. And so this is an insurance policy based on a. You know, a, a, a projected number of bank failures in a given decade, mm -hmm. uh, plus a lot. And so it's a very conservative set of mathematics, meaning you could have a whole bunch of banks fail. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of them cashed out uh, FDIC and, and went belly up. FDIC took them over, resold the banks. Yeah. The sale of the bank, the money goes back into the insurance policy as well to cover. Mm -hmm. But um, that happened in 2008, a lot more than in, the last, right. in the last three or four months or so. Yeah. So, But if you had um, 25,000 banks crash at one time, there's not enough money. And by the way, if 25,000 banks crash at one we, time, we got issues. life as we know it in America <laughs> no longer exists. That's right. There's a whole lot of other crap that goes with that. That can't be just an independent thing. Yeah. You got to understand that if that occurs, everywhere you shop is out of business. Oh, yeah. We're looking for clean water and, and, and supplies. Exactly. Not <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're not we're not looking for gold. Yeah. That, that's exactly what we're doing. So that that but it's a good question. And it's good something to think about. So yeah. um, no. and, and it's good that. You know, we do a little bit of education on yeah. it occasionally here. Jason's in Dallas, Texas. Hi, Jason. How are you? Hey, how are you today? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Appreciate you taking the call, and condolences to your caller, Susie, as well. That was really sweet what you did for her. Thank you. Um, with her losing her husband. So, um, you know, I have I have some issues, and I have, I have some kind of questions, and I'm sure that you get to the questions through the issues. But um, a few years ago, probably four years ago, my wife and I picked up and moved from our home in Los Angeles. We moved out to Texas. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it was about a year before the pandemic. I felt like something was going to happen. Um, just mm-hmm. seeing where LA had, was going. And Jason, I don't want to be rude, right but now. I am up against the clock. Go ahead and just ask me your question. So we have a new business and a new baby, a lot of debt. Um, when I had the baby last year, I was trying to pay us, you know, a, a top salary, but I feel like I'm now bleeding my first baby, which is this new business. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get my real estate license to supplement some income, but what do I sell? What do I get rid of to prioritize um, the debt while also keeping up with this big new, this big new thing in my life, which yeah. is was just trying to raise a new kid. Amen. Well, very cool. Hey, we're going to put you guys through Financial Peace University, too, because I am up against the clock. I'll make sure you get served, okay? But in the meantime, you got big, hairy car payments? Get rid of the big, hairy car. Uh, You need to prioritize very carefully and keep that business running because it's the golden goose that's laying the eggs. But don't leave a bunch of extra money down there and don't do a bunch of reinvestment down there. Take it home and clean up the mess at home. It's a balancing act between the two. Uh, I wish I could give you a more detailed answer. Hang on. Jay, uh, Austin will pick up for you. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 40% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. There's a new movement in the financial world, the banking world, to do advertising with a narrative of how much they're here to help. Mm. When a bank says they're here to help, you should act like the government saying they're here to help. Okay, you should say, oh, my gosh. I mean, so let me give you an example. If you, you know, SoFi spent $300 million last year on marketing and advertising with sweet little people on the screen going, we're trying to get out of debt and we're working our way out of debt. Do you know what SoFi does? They sell debt. (laughs) Hello? Is this thing on? Hello? Are you out there? (laughs) You know what we call that, Dave? We call that a catfish. Definitely. <laughs> That's a catfish. With no mustard. <laughs> yes. Catfish with no mustard. Parading around as one thing when really you're, it's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yep. It's like a cat pretending to be a fish. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. You're exactly right. Oh, yeah, that man. catfishing thing. Catfishing on uh, on Instagram will get you banned from people's lives. That's right. Catfishing when you're a bank is a way of doing business. Man. Here's That's another crazy. one. Here's another one. Rocket mortgage. Oh, aren't they? They're just fast. They're a rocket. I got it. Dave, we got to get into this rocket mortgage. This is the headline that came across our desk. This is so great. Rocket Mor- mortgage launches a credit card to help you save or pay off your home. Which everyone knows that works. 
I mean, it's really, let's be honest, Dave, it was only a matter of time. So they. No, I mean, I, when you're sitting there in the meeting with the ad agency, what are you guys smoking <laughs> that comes up with this byline for a press release? Because this is a byline from a yep. press release that CNBC then picked up. Rocket Mortgage launches a credit card to help you. Did uh, anybody not go? This is like standing in traffic will not get you killed. <laughs> Oh, gosh. It says saving up for a down payment and closing costs is a major hurdle on the path to home ownership. Oh, boohoo. The new credit card from mortgage lender Rocket Companies aims to help buyers eliminate it. So they're saying, hey, you know what? It's not going to be hard anymore because now be hard. you can use a credit card. You just borrow your down payment on our credit card. You can earn lots of points. Oh, 5X points on e and the, Oh, here, I love it. Because now the dumb people in the world are going to go, 5X points. Yes, I definitely want to put my down, you know, my down payment on my credit card because I get 5X points on it. And guess what you get to do with the points? Pay down the mortgage. Whew. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did, did, did the dog just chase its tail? The dog chased its it, Yeah. Yeah, he's going in circles. He ate he? himself. So we, <laughs> wait a minute. We, we, we got points that aren't real no. anything. To use to pay down on the mortgage to cover the down payment that we didn't make because we used the credit card to get the points. Oh, my God. That it's is like, a dog chasing its tail, it, isn't it? It's like when you go to the carnival <laughs> and they go, which which cup is it under? And they move where's it and they move the it and they pee? move it. Where's the pee, boys and girls? Wow. I'll tell you where it is. Rocket Mortgage is peeing on you. That's where it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It says, okay, so five, You. this is what you get. If you sign up for the Rocket Signature... <laughs> Visa, Visa card. card. You get five rocket reward points on all purchases. <laughs> Sounds like I'm in kindergarten. I know, right? I get rockets, mommy. I got three rockets today. And, and, and this is probably the one that it just uh, sounds dumb. It just, we're talking about down payments, mortgage payments, real money here. And it says, but you get the ninety-five, you know, dollar service fee waived. There you go. All right, you get ninety-five dollars, guys. Great. Uh, they, wait a minute. They waived their fee that's too high. Yeah. Annual hey. fee is $95, but they've waived that. You know what? That. I'm, I'm going to waive my fee, too. Um, I didn't have one until a few minutes ago, but now I've got one, and I'm going to waive it. I'm not going to charge you guys to listen <laughs> to the show. It was going to be $100, but we're going to waive that. We're just going to waive that. We're going to waive you're that. You're such great customers. You're we're going to waive that. Y'all are amazing, and so we're just going to waive that. Here we go. Intro APR none, <laughs> but the regular APR... I don't know if I can even say this without screaming it. 20.49% and it's variable. So it can go up to 30.49% APR, which just stands for added pain and regret. All right. <laughs> you're, you're, you're using your credit card to pay down your home loan. Added pain and regret. That's good. I like At that. 30.49% variable. You may as well have went out and just, oh gosh, this is the worst thing I've seen in a long, long time, Dave. Well, credit needed, is, not specified. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the thing about this is it's so funny because it's not oh. even subtle. It's just it's just pretty much announcing we're going to screw you. Yeah. And here's how. And you're going to you're going to like it. <laughs> they're not even you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> this is they're not even trying to. I mean, when they said except, credit needed, not specified we're here to help you. Yes, we're here to help you. James you? said in the booth, he said, this sounds very incestuous. I said, yes, because we're, we're getting you, Rocket Mortgage, we're getting you the loan that you could never afford in the first place. <laughs> and then because we know you could never afford it in the first place, we're going to help you by giving you a credit card so you can put the down payment on that you could never afford in the first place and help you pay the payment that you could never afford in the first place. And we're just... We're good guys, We're man. We're here for you. Out. I thought he meant when he said incestuous that your parents had to be cousins for you to fall for this. That might be true, too. <laughs> that might be true. You need to be missing brain cells in order to this think is, that this is a good idea. This is unfreaking believable Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. You guys, y'all aren't even bashful about screwing your customers. I mean, you just come right out and say it. Wow. We're just going to do it like 30% interest. <laughs> yeah, right there, man. Just step up. We got you back. Man. Uh, wow. It's just, it's, there is no limit to their. 
But there is a generous reward rate on all purchases. There's lots of generosity involved here. <laughs> I just, I smell generosity all over this. Wow. Yeah, this is a steaming pile of, you know what. Catfish. Catfish. Yeah. <laughs> Rotten catfish. Mary's in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, Mary, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you doing today? Better than I deserve. How are you? Good. So I had a question. Um, I have $60,000 debt in a credit card, a few credit cards, and I uh, wanted to find out what would be, I guess, the fastest or best way to pay that off just because the interest rates are so high. $60,000. Snowball effect. Where are you going to get yes, $60,000? Interest rates not your problem. Oh. Spending more than you make your problem. He's not wrong. What do you make? Uh, my husband and I ninety. Good. There you go. How much your car payment? Uh, three hundred a month. What about the other car? Same three hundred. Both of them three hundred, six hundred. So what do you okay. owe on these two cars? Um, each this, one of them is 15,000 and the other one is 12 and 60 in credit card debt. And how yes, much sir. in student loans? None. Good. What other debt? House. Medical? None. What so, am I leaving out other than the house? Lawnmower? Um, no, sir. Just. That's it. So okay. that just means y'all need to get your spending under control. You okay. need to get on a written budget. Right. Yeah. Are you on a budget yet? Nope. So we are. We just paid off 50000 last year. In wow. Life. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, that's suspiciously close to 65000 15 more. Right. So if you did it once before, so doing, you can do it again. Right. We're doing the snowball effect. And that's that exactly what you need to do. Interest rate's not your problem. My, Very good. Because if you pay the 60000 off in one uh -huh. year, you are not got an interest rate problem. You cannot borrow okay, your so way out of debt. You're going to have to come up with $60,000 the way you came up with $50,000. And when you do that, you will be debt free. Other than these cars, and you got to get them paid off too mm -hmm. while we're doing this. So you just keep leaning in, kiddo. Keep leaning in. You got the sauce. Now just keep applying the sauce. That's what we do. This is The Ramsey Show. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, hanging out with us. We're so glad you're here. Open phones at 888 825 -5225. Folks, uh, if you got a lot of questions about taxes, we get it. Taxes are confusing. And to help you out, uh, we're going to unpack a question from one of our listeners. I'm confused about the new standard deduction. I'm head of household with two dependents. Can you explain how this works? Okay, this year, your standard deduction is $600 higher to, quote, adjust for inflation, unquote. That means as a single person, you can subtract nineteen four from your taxable income like an automatic tax write-off. Compared to someone who's filing single, your standard are you you can do that as a head of household. Your standard deduction is higher and your tax rate is lower, mainly to offset the cost of caring for dependents. Now, you can choose to itemize your deductions instead of taking the standard deduction. Uh, by the way, if you're married filing jointly, it's about twenty eight thousand. And um, and so unless you have write offs, itemized write offs in excess of the standard deduction, you take the standard deduction. Now, let me tell you what that means. Last year, 88% of Americans took the standard deduction. Only 12% did a C, Schedule C, which means you're taking write-offs, okay? So you'd have to have large write-offs due to losses, interest paid, charitable giving, or some other kind of write-offs that total up to more than the standard deduction, or you wouldn't take the standard deduction. 
you, you'd be smarter to take the standard deduction. So if you got ten thousand dollars in write offs, you can do that. So that's mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. of the things, Jade, that people say, I don't pay my home off, I'll lose the write off. <laughs> You're not using the write off anyway, Duber. Right. <laughs> because you're taking the standard deduction. And if you're taking the standard deduction, your write-off on your home means absolutely zero. So you're staying in debt for no stupid reason. That's a good point. That's a, that People say that just – it's vast majority, 88% last year took the standard deduction. They do not itemize. So if you're ready to file your taxes, check out Ramsey Smart Tax. It lets you file online with upfront – Low pricing, no hidden fees. You can save up to 70% when you switch from another software, which would be a good idea. Head to RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. Jasmine is in Seattle. Hey, Jasmine, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jay. Thank you so much for taking my call. It's mm-hmm. truly been a godsend finding the show. You're welcome. Um, so... I am a new first-time mom to a five-month-old baby boy. Oh, congratulations. And I just realized, <laughs> thank you. Um, I just realized, though, after finding your show, that my husband and I are in a scary spot financially. Uh, so my husband makes 70000 a year as an ICU nurse, mm-hmm. and I just transitioned to be a stay-at-home mom, and we have $140,000 in debt. So my husband just started picking up overtime so okay. we can start the debt snowball. He's working 60 hours a week now in the ICU, and I want to do the best I can to support him and our family in tackling this mountain. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking of trying to find freelance work to do during naps and evenings, but I'm worried if that's the right thing. So my question is, would it be better for me to try to pick up freelance work for a little extra, or should I prioritize my role as a wife and a caretaker to our son so that my husband doesn't have any household stress and has like the best success at keeping up? 60-hour weeks and a high-stress job uh, to tackle our debt. How much debt do you have? 140000 On what? 80 is in student loans, and 60 is consumer debt, um, credit cards, and personal loans um, that have accumulated over the last seven years. No car loan? No car loan. And what, and can, you, what can you make freelancing? Um, I'm thinking that I could... I uh, get about 600 a month if I did 10 hours, which uh, I think I would have with like nap times and evening. What, so explain your hesitation. So if you were to take two hours out of your evening and do a little bit of side work. 10 hours a month? Or 10 hours a week, a week. sorry. Oh, a week. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's I, all right. I, I mean, are you just worried that you aren't being a good mom or something or that you're not going to be able to take care of the house the way you want to for your husband? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. So he does like 12 hour shifts. Uh-huh. Um, so I right now typically make the dinner. I put my little one to bed and yeah. he is five months. So I know in the first year, a lot of things can change. So I guess I'm worried to even get started in case like I get too stressed out doing it or if I end up like not having enough time to do that and like take care of the household. Like, I guess I, I think it's worry a, that I think it's a fear that's existing because you're not it's unknown. So at the very least, if it were me, I would try it. I would try to work and see if I can juggle it. If you guys have both decided, hey, it's important for us to be as intense as possible about this debt. So we're both going to sacrifice. We're both understanding that this might be a chaotic season of our life. And if you start it and you're making the money and at the end of the day, you're like, man, you know, these few hundred dollars that I'm bringing in, it is not worth X, Y, Z. If you figure that out and then maybe you have to pivot to another strategy, I say try it. And then it's not just this fear looming over you of I'm afraid to try it. But if I don't, you the, know, the other thing is this, the there's trigger. no reason for this to stress anybody out. You might get tired, but there's no reason to be stressed. Mm-hmm. True that. All you got to do is just plan it. You say, this is what we're doing. Here's the details, Mm -hmm. okay? On this night, I'm going to cover this, and you're not. On that night, you're going to cover it, and I'm not. Yep. And this is the system. This is the process. This is the schedule. It's going to suck, but so does being deeply in debt. And I can add 30 k to the top line of this situation. You're making 70. That's 100. We can knock this out twice as fast if we lean into this together and we say, okay, 
There's a big old pile of dishes here. How are we getting the dishes clean? We both got to get in here. We both got to pick apart, and we take a process, and we lay a system in, and one dries, and one puts them in the dishwasher, and here we go. And we just get the dishes clean, and that's what you're doing. You're just laying into the work. Yep. And you're doing it with detail, and there's no reason for stress. Again, you're going to get tired, but oh, well, you got a baby. You're going to be tired. That just goes with the territory. Mm -hmm. And something tells me, I don't know if I'm right, Jasmine, but something tells me this one kid is probably not your only. There might be another one coming up down the pipe. And you for sure won't be rid of this debt for them. Exactly. Exactly. Because then your time is going to be stretched even thinner. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. A hundred percent. Systems and scheduling and lots of communication and agreement makes the stress go away. It Mm -hmm. doesn't make the fatigue go away, but it makes the stress go away. Mm-hmm. How does that sound? I, I think that's doable. I was leaning towards like just trying it because you can always like change. Yeah. But I, I think it was just the fear that was there. Yeah, but don't try it without okay. laying out a detailed game plan. Give, give it a fair okay. shot. And you the need- detailed game plan. You and your husband sit down, TV off, kid in bed. This is okay. We're going to lay this out. I'm going to try this. Here's the nights I'm going to do freelance. Here's what I'm doing. Boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. Here's your days. Here's what Saturday looks like. Here's what Sunday looks like. Here's what the days off look like, whatever it is. And you just lay it out yeah. and go, okay, we're going to lean into this for a short period of time. And, you know, Sharon and I have learned, you know, one of the reasons that I've been able to become so successful in business is because she and I plan in detail calendars and money. Yes. We budget time and money and we're in detailed agreement. Mm-hmm. And that way I don't get home and, and I don't say I'm going to be home at 530 and I come wandering in at 630. I, you know, the number of times I don't show up when I said I was going to is very close to zero. That's good, Dave. Well, it's not because I'm some kind of stellar person. It's a plan. <laughs> you know, we planned it. And I'm, you know, I know today when I get off the air, I'm going to do, I've got three social media things and five commercials to record, and then I'm heading to the house. So I know yep. where I'm going to be. If something blows up and I need to stay here and work, I can email her and say I'm going to be running 10 minutes late. But, right. but I know where I'm going to be. It's already planned. Yeah. That's and good. so you can plan out where you're going to be, and then you're not freaked out. It's kind of, you know, what it is, it's like the week before you go on vacation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're not stressed. You got a million things to do. You get two weeks worth okay. of done, two weeks worth of work done before the week of vacation because you're trying to get it all lined right, up. Right, right. But it's all process and systems. Okay, I see where at, it took me a minute to see where you were going with that one, Dave, but I got you now. Yeah, I got you. Because you're going, I got to get this knocked out and get this yep. knocked out so that I can be on vacation and be free. Got you. Yes. And you, you, you knock the crap out and you do the, you line it up and then knock the dominoes over. So the next week, you know, when you're in Cabo, you don't you worry. You can about relax. It. You know, that's it. Yeah. This. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they really love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Thank you for jumping in. Jake is with us in Tampa, Florida. Hi, Jake. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How are you today? Better than I deserve. What's up? Um, so, <clears throat> I'm, you know, I've been following the podcast, and um, I'm really ready to grab, you know, the bull by the horns here and really get cranking on uh, this debt that me and my wife has. But I'm finding that she's very fearful of the process, so much so where she's almost getting paralyzed with fear and, you know, doing nothing instead of 
you know, getting after it, basically. What's she afraid of? Um, she's afraid of dipping into the savings, um, getting rid of our vehicles to, you know, get cheaper ones, worrying about them breaking down, you know, a cheaper vehicle breaking down, that sort of thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to get going here. She's fine with putting a little bit of extra money towards credit cards, but anything major like that, she just, she just can't, um, seem to get past it. So you've got a, you've got a lump of cash sitting there that you've been saving up and you're wanting to put it on the debt and that's making her feel funky. Is that right? Yeah. Well, l- lump is a word for it. It's, it's only about $5,000, but, um, but how much yeah, do you owe on your car? You know, it's, it's better than nothing. What was that? How much do you owe on your car? Uh, well, we have two trucks. Um, you're going to kill me. <laughs> I got, um, thirty $39,000 loan on uh, my pickup. And we have about twenty seven left on hers. Yeah. What do you guys make a year? You make about one hundred and thirty a year. Y'all are freaking insane. Yeah. That's yeah, insanity. How old are you? Twenty six. Uh, twenty seven, and my wife twenty five. Yeah, like I've done this before. Okay. Wow. All right. So what's happening is, is that you've recognized there's a problem and that you're going to ha- that's a pretty ex- s- extreme problem. And you're going to have to take some extreme measures to fix an extreme problem. And she hasn't even recognized that there's an extreme problem yet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she knows there's a problem. No, but it doesn't no, seem to no, be no. She does not think it. there is a problem. Not like this. Oh, we could pay a little extra on the credit cards. That doesn't say there's a problem. You guys are freaking broke. Mm hmm. You can't yep. breathe. You got eighty thousand dollars worth of stupid cars. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Yep. Yeah, I mean, wow. No, I'm not going to kill you. I'm crying for you. It's scaring me. I'm more scared than your wife is, and it's not even my house. Those those cars is that the only debt, or is there more laying around? Uh, we got the truck, and then we have uh. 21000 in credit cards. Oh, yeah. Well, of course you do, because you can't pay your bills, because no. you have car payments. So my guess is a yeah. lot of her fear, you guys have never gone through financial peace. You're you're picking this up from listening to the show. Is that, am I right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, my wife, used, or um, my mom used to have, you know, Dave on the radio, and uh-huh. I, you know, listen here and there, and I've you know, I kind of realized the predicament that I'm in and I realized I really need to do something here. Yeah. So my guess is that she you're just relaying this information to her and she might be getting bits and pieces of it. But she's not maybe heard it laid out in the way that she needs to in order to kind of trust this process and really see that there's a problem. It sounds like you've been listening and your eyes are wide open and she's still focused mm-hmm. on. Yeah, but I want to be comfortable. She's she's still seeing comfort more than she's seeing like the house is on fire. She doesn't see that yet. Yeah. You, she's yeah. like, Honey, and, I, you know, I, I smell smoke, but I think you can put it out. Yeah. And you and I are like, uh, mm-hmm. the house is burning down around you. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, we sat down, we did our budget and, you know, she knows the numbers and, you know, we, we went through all of that, but it just, it, it just seems to be affecting me more. And, uh, yeah. Because I'm she's seeing that as normal. So you so. cannot, you cannot start this until she is, um, it, it is as informed and as enthused about cleaning up this mess as you are, because it's you're exactly. simp- it's simply not going to work. Mm-hmm. Because it's not that she's afraid; it's that she's uninformed. She does she does not understand where you all are. Mm-hmm. She may have glanced at the numbers, but she has not swallowed them and put them in her heart, because otherwise she'd have heartburn. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You guys need to sit down and have a a real conversation about this. And honestly, you probably need to go through Financial Peace University, which if Austin can pick up at the end of this call, he can give that to you because that's really... If we give you that class, nine-week class, one class a week for nine weeks, and even if you took two a week for uh, five weeks and knocked it out, Mm -hmm. will you start it and with her? And can you get her to sit down and watch this with you? Um, I can. Yes. Yes, I can do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, because it's better. Honey, it's better I, if honey, Dave... I need you to do this as a favor to me. This stuff's driving me crazy. You're not worried about it, but I can't sleep. Mm-hmm. I need your help. Please look at this with me. 
and let Dave and, yeah. and John and, and all the other personalities in there be the one to drive this message home and let them be the bad guy. <laughs> no, it's not you. a bad guy. It's not a bad guy. We're all on the same team here. We all want one thing, and that's for Jake and his wife to prosper. We want them to win. Yep. We love you. We want you to win. We're not. None of us are bad guys. You're not a bad guy. She's not a bad guy. She just hasn't recognized where she is yet. That's right. And once she, because yeah, yeah. I, I want her so fired up that she's like, Jake, why haven't you already sold your truck? Right. But if if he's the one going in every night and is like, honey, I, yeah. we need to do this. We, she's going to be like, Ugh. so it. let us be the one yeah, well, to tell her. Well, the... she, well, if she, once she catches the vision of this, mm -hmm. she doesn't have the vision for it. That's all it is. And once she catches the vision for it, then the, it, it's not fear. Fear is not the right word. It's she simply doesn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. She's not afraid. She's just saying no. She, she likes being able to go and swipe I, that credit I like, card. I, and like it's this, I like this. I like this thirty thousand dollar car. Why? Why would I not like it? Yeah, nope. Yeah, until nobody, you figure out that you're dadgum right on the verge of bankruptcy. Yeah, nobody wants to go from a nice forty thousand dollar car to a to an old eight thousand. <laughs> like that doesn't feel good, but you got to do it. Yeah, I mean, when when your best idea is, honey, we're going to sell your car, that usually doesn't go well. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, but yeah, you, both of these cars got to go, and you all are going to get on beans and rice, and you're going to learn to live on less than you make. You make too much money to be this broke. Mm -hmm. You need the, to get both of you need to get disgusted. Once you guys get out of these trucks, this is going to go lickety split. These yeah. trucks are the problem. Well, the, the credit cards are not there because of credit card spending. The credit cards are there because they can't afford to live that's after right. they pay these truck payments. Yeah. That's what it is. They're squeezed. Yeah, that's been the And quote, we pick, we pick the credit cards picking up the slack. So when there is no slack, then boom. You know, yeah, you'll, you'll knock them out, and you're going you're gonna to have this mess cleaned up once you get rid of these ridiculous vehicles. Um but yeah, you it's you know have a truck that needs to be amputated. You have a truck amputation coming in your future. <laughs> Amputate the Tahoe. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. Thank you for joining us, America. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. I say this a lot. If you celebrate Friday too much, it may be a sign that you need to change what you're doing Monday through Thursday. If you feel stuck in a J-O-B, if your work is leaving you exhausted and unfulfilled and burnt out, well, it means you're doing something you hate. Ken Coleman's our expert in the world of work. And he's hitting the road to help you finally find a job that you actually enjoy and make more money. It is possible. Ken's career breakthrough events, they're amazing. He'll coach you in several different areas, whether finding a job or how to get a raise or what's the bonus or, hey, all of this. And you get his wildly popular Get Clear assessment when you sign up for one of these breakthrough events. The first one is April 20th in Kansas City. And uh, then Chicago, May 16th, Atlanta, May 18th, and Dallas on May 23rd. Tickets are $50. Get yours at RamseySolutions.com slash events today. Canada is next. Abram is with us. Hi, Abram. How are you? Not too bad, sir. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Wonderful. I'm just trying to wrap my head around uh, how to prioritize some house rentals that need to happen. Um, now, these house rentals are, you know, they're more than your basic uh, uh, cosmetic, making it look good. There, there are some actual structural things, but the house is structurally sound. It's not going to fall down tomorrow, so it's not a panic structure. Um, but I'm thinking my gut feeling is in the next five years to the max 10, uh, max 10 years, these, these rentals need to be dealt with. I'm just trying to, to wrap my head around what kind of funds do we throw at this? 
Is it worth throwing funds at it, knowing that uh, our eventual goal is an acreage, uh, even though that, that price take just seems so unachievable? Um, just kind of trying to prioritize that. We are in baby step two right now. Just sold our, our $40,000 dump yesterday and paid the dump tax on it. Um, yeah. Okay, so what does the repairs cost? As of right now, I don't have a number, but my guess is I'm going to be anywhere between 10 and 30, depending on what we, we deal with. We're actually dealing with some uh, actual subfloors and some floor structure issues that's translating into uh, linoleum cracking and some Sounds like you got to do that issues. to sell it anyway, don't you? Most likely, yes. Yeah. Okay. What's the house worth fixed? Uh, probably around 200 Okay. What do you make? Between 80 and 100 And how much is in your baby step two? Uh, well, we got 152 left on the house. That's not a baby step two. Line. Okay. Uh, f- yeah, we're, we're just working through your book right now. Don't have money make okay. over. Baby step two is all your debts except the house, working the debt snowball, listing them smallest to largest and attacking them in that order. Right. Okay. So okay. how much so baby, how much a, non-house debt do you have? 3500 on a credit card. Uh, got eleven five in student loans and fifteen in a line of credit. Okay, how long do you think it's going to take you to knock that out? I'm thinking we. Uh, my guess is a a year. Okay. Well, if I added that correctly, as you were saying it, it's really close to thirty thousand dollars, isn't it? Pretty near, yeah. Yeah. So if you do that in a year, and then you're done in another year, you'd have the money for the repairs. Yeah. That's what I would do. I mean, you said that these repairs are not like life threatening. It's not like the house is going to fall in a little bit more than cosmetic, right? It can wait a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not like you just had this big water damage and you've got to, you know, do something. This is what you want to do to make the house look better. Is that right? Yeah. 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 That aside my own itch, wherever I live, I got to make it better. Oh yeah. You need to hold off on that. You got bigger goals. (laughs) You got, you got bigger goals to focus on. You got to just kind of, you know, when you're sitting on the couch at night, just just look at the TV. Don't look at the carpet. Don't look at how much better the floors can be. <laughs> no, you don't be looking at the TV. You need, you need to be working and getting this debt paid off. There you go. Even better, Dave. <laughs> Even better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Work so much you're barely at home. Try that there one. You go. That, that works, too. So, yeah. So, you know, a repair when you're in baby step two that has to be done to for safety or uh you know, something that's extreme. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've got to stop and do that. Um, But even in our case, uh, Jade, when we were uh, going broke all those years ago, we had no money and we're working our way through this stuff. We had a leak in the roof Mm -hmm. and it was dripping down the uh, light fixture over the kitchen table. Ooh, a little scary. So I went over to the hardware store and got some of that black tar stuff Pretty pretty white trashy. Yeah, that, that I was gonna say that's an Uncle Boo Boo. Uh, yeah, that's moment. pretty much pretty much uh, <laughs> redneck Dave up there on the roof smearing this this tar around, right? Uh, and I got that 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 tar smeared around, stopped the leak. It looked like crap though. I bet. I, and uh, but you know what? It didn't. It wasn't gonna burn the house down because it wasn't running down the electrical fixture, True right? That. And uh, it didn't leak. It just really looked awful. And Sharon's like embarrassed. And it's in the back of the house. Nobody, I mean, only the neighbors behind saw it. It's not the, <laughs> not the people on the street saw it. But sure. uh, anyway, it, it only lasted like, um, you know, it was only like a year and a half before we paid, <laughs> before we paid cash and put a roof on it. There but we go. had to get the other stuff mess. You know, we had to just stop the leak temporarily until we could go and get the cash together and get the debts paid yeah. off. You got to channel your and inner MacGyver. That's it. That's what we did. And, and um, you know... Um, it's hard though, folks, because folks are watching HGTV. I know, and they're watching all of these shows, and everybody can just listen. When you're broke, renovate. Chip and Joanna can't help. Okay. When you're broke, they're no help at all. They're sweet, <laughs> but they're they're when you're not broke. Mm-hmm. You can't afford Magnolia stuff. I mean, no. you're, you're broke. You know, you know, we were broke. We're trying to feed kids. <laughs> we weren't trying to show off. And so they're sweet people. We like Chip and Joanna. Yeah, they're but wonderful. We can't afford they're, they're, that in but baby that's, step two. That's not for broke people. 
And they don't think their stuff's for broke people. No, but they've got everybody walking into their house and looking around going, oh, well, maybe I need to change these floors or, you know, we haven't painted in a while. And quartz countertops or feed the baby. Let me think here. Hmm. Yeah. Suddenly, suddenly you notice the light f- fixture in your bathroom. Like you've never seen it before, but suddenly you, you notice it and you go, oh, that kind of. Yeah, I think yeah. I need one of those. Yeah. To be, I, need, I need a new one to be happy. I'll be happy then. <laughs> Thomas is with us in Las Vegas. Hey, Thomas, what's up? Hey, Dave and James. It's so great to be able to talk to you guys. I'm a little bit nervous, but excited to talk to you. No <laughs> trouble. We've never lost a patient. How can we help? <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, kind of a two-part question for you, a career move. Um, right now, I'm currently getting paid. I- I'm in a niche-type field called medical physics. I make 175000 and right now I got a job offer for a- another job as a medical physicist uh, up in Utah. But I- the downside is that I'd be getting paid 165000 but the Retirement contribution is 14%, which is very unique, and uh, and 3% right now is what I'm getting. And so I just kind of had uh, two questions is how should I evaluate if I should take that job? And then also if I do take the other job that has a 14% contribution to retirement, does that change my 15% baby step for? Answer to that is no. You are putting in 15% regardless mm-hmm. of what they're putting in, period. That doesn't change. Okay. Now, the, the question, you don't take a job over retirement match. That's a good point. Yeah. Just don't. Okay. Take a job because it's the right job, because I want to live in that city. The upward potential is there. But if you're down to where the only thing that's different is a retirement match, mm. you know. That's going to wear off it, fast. Who's the best company <laughs> to work for? Which environment is toxic? Which environment's not toxic? Are these people known as being great people? Are they weird um, you know, what's your upside? If you're if you got more upside in Vegas than you do in Salt Lake or wherever it is in Utah, I, that's how you take the job. And where does your family want to live? You know, we love it here. We hate it here. That matters. That matters. That's part of the equation. Take your job based on that. The retirement's just part of the thing. Although that is a great match. It is. That's wonderful. But we don't take a job based on the match. Bad, bad, uh, bad fishing lure. This is the Ramsey Show. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. On the debt-free stage, Nathan and Ella are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. How are you? Better than we deserve. How much debt have you guys paid off? $165,000. Cool. How long did this take you? 20 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? We range from 115 to 175. Excellent. What do you all do for a living? I'm a project manager. And I'm an occupational therapist in the school system. Phenomenal. And where do you guys live? We live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, cool. Welcome to Nashville. Good. So uh, what kind of debt was the 165? Every dime of it was my student loans. Whoa. Oh, did you, and you said occupational Therapy. therapist. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Okay. So, uh, Nathan, that's what you signed up for. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> How long you guys been married? About two years. How long you been out of school? Uh, I graduated when the world ended in May of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Great timing, Ella. Right? Fantastic. Yeah. Just in time uh, for the world to end. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just in time. Wow. So what happened 20 months it, you yeah, know, 20 I mean, months so ago, that you guy, graduate, you, you get married, and pandemic hits all at the same time. 
and you've got this huge student loan debt. Well, tell us this story. Well, uh, you know, before we got married, um, when we were engaged, we, uh, I was decided to start saving up money, uh, knowing that this was coming. And part of our pre-marriage counseling, we um, we did Financial Peace University. And Yay, pastor! <laughs> Way to go, pastor! That was self-imposed. It was not required. Oh, we yeah. decided yeah. Oh, to do it. Well, way to go, you two! Yeah, we actually did it during the uh, the free trials uh, that y'all were offering at that time. So. Oh, yeah. When the world ended, we gave everybody free yeah. FPU. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> well, yep. and then uh, once we got married, we uh, hit the ground running, hit, hit uh, send on all of uh, the money that I had saved up during that time and uh, that she had uh, also paid off during that time, too. So How much money had you saved? About $50,000. Wow. You get married and go, all right. <laughs> game I off. made her push the button. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. There I were tears do involved. <laughs> Man, that's true love right there. That's true love. I love it. It's well done. It's the way you should do it. Uh, and we're joking around, but it still kind of gives you a gulp. Yeah. Moment. Both of you, really, because you're going, he just took his 50K and put on my, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we really are one. Yeah. Now we really are married. Yeah, that's that's real. That's real. That's mm -hmm. good. Very good, you guys. A lot of maturity shown there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so we take 165. We drop 50 on it. We're down to 115. We're making 115. Now you get your new gig as an occupational therapist. That kicks the income up, and we go game on. Yep. And just like that. Just like that. Well, and we did lots of side hustles, you know, grocery delivery. I did babysitting. I got a PRN job at a skilled nursing facility. So we did just about everything wow. that we could. Yeah. Oh, even social media, TikTok, that stuff too. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean by that? Uh, so we actually have a dog that's uh, famous on TikTok right now. So. Oh, <laughs> the oh funny, my gosh. Funny George thing about that is, her. Yeah, George follows her. <laughs> well, I need to know more. <laughs> That's her. Her name is Maple. Yeah. Like okay. very Maple cool. What kind of dog is that? It's a Vishla. Oh, they're great dogs. Fantastic I've got dogs. a friend that has three of them. They are fabulous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you, she's famous on TikTok. Yes. But she does all kinds of funny stuff, I bet. Yeah, yeah. she pays her own bills. Uh, uh, and then some. And then some, yeah. Very okay, cool. Good. Very good. cool. I need to get a dog that's famous on TikTok. <laughs> I know, get, right? Get something out of these animals. So, and way to go. Way to go. All right. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Well, for me, uh, it's being learning to say no so you can say yes later. Mm. For me, it would be making a budget and sticking to it. Mm. Mm. First time you did that, huh? Yes. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, I mean... Nathan, you had been saying no because you had money saved. Yes. <laughs> so, but it was a different kind of no this time because you're doing it together with somebody. It knits you together in your first few years of marriage like nothing else does to attack this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, it does. It definitely gives you a purpose. Yeah. That's so good. I'm just curious. So you had the $50,000 saved. How did that make you feel, Ella, when he was like, I'm writing the check, or you, you push the button. Yeah, but how did that make you feel when he were like, hey, this is our money. He believes that, I believe that. No shame, no guilt, we're in this together. Like, how did that make you feel? It made me feel very loved, but then mm. I also felt very guilty. Mm. Every single budget meeting we had, I cried. Mm. Because mm. I just carried so much shame and guilt that it was my fault that we were doing this, that we had to go through it. How'd you get, like, how did you overcome that? Uh, step one for me is always tears. <laughs> and then I feel like we just talked about it a lot. And never once did he like hold it over my head or blame me or anything. It was always, it's okay. It sucks right now. But mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to be done. Mm -hmm. And then we get to move on and do the next big thing. And now you are. That. Yeah. So proud of y'all. Well done. Thank you. You're a neat couple. Very cool. Who, uh, other than the two of you, who was cheering you on? Well, I would say our family probably thought we were pretty crazy, but they were very supportive of our goal. Yeah. You're a little weird, but we love you anyway. Yeah. yeah. They're putting like their that. dog on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Very cool. Well, congratulations, you guys. We're proud of you. Excellent you. job, heroes. Mm -hmm. Excellent job. You two are heroes for sure. We've got the Live and Give bundle for you to celebrate. The Baby Steps Millionaire's number one best-selling book. And, uh, of course, that's the next step for you. You're on your way to doing that. You knock out 165, you can have a million. It's doable. It's very, very doable. you got great careers. You know how to work together. 
and you, you set yourself up to attack anything. If you can slay this dragon together, you can slay any other kind of dragon that comes at you. Right. Uh, the Total Money Makeover book as well, you'll be able to give that to somebody and that's inspired by your story that will get started. Uh, a Financial Peace University membership and either use it or give that as well. It's all the live and give bundle. So you get to do all of it or give all of it or however you want to do it. So very, very, very well done. Nathan and Ella, Raleigh, North Carolina. 165000 paid off in 20 months. First order of business after graduation and marriage. Very well done. $115,000 to $175,000 income during that time. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt-free. Free. Yeah. This is how it's done. Jay, people listening to that can go past, and even that young couple right there, Nathan and Ella, can go past real quickly. You and Sam and Sharon and I can't go past real quickly that the number one cause of divorce in North America today is money fights and money problems. Yeah. They're not going to have those. Nope. Nope. They're not going to have those. And what stood out to me very much about that is he had, for the lack of this conference, he had his money before they were married that mm -hmm. he had saved. Mm -hmm. And he was willing it's to huge. say, this is ours. And he, like she said, and, he didn't make us feel no bad guilt, about it. No guilt. No guilt. No guilt tripping. No guilt tripping. And I mean, she had to work through that, but he's there all along going, no, this is ours. This is how we we're si together. What I signed up for. When you yeah. do that. Uh, that's, um, that, that's, you know. When you learn to be generous together, to invest together, to spend wisely together, mm -hmm. when you control all of that, Jesus said your treasure is where your heart is. When yes. you are in agreement about where the money is going, you are in agreement about your life. Yeah. And they did that as a first order of business in their marriage. Highly unusual. It yeah. also sets them up to win. There are couples that have been married 35 years that don't even know what the other one has. No. Well, it's... Um it's maturity and it's letting go of your ego, your ego and your need to be power trip and control. That is what says, no, this is mine. I'm going to keep this over here. Everything else we'll do together, but I'm going to keep this separate to the side. It makes no sense. Um, it, but it if is, you do it that, is ego and it is power tripping. You're exactly right. If you do that, nothing's getting in between you. Powerful couple right there, boys and girls. Y'all can take a lesson from them regardless of your age or uh, how long you've been married. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it right. The probability from the data we have that that couple is going to be very wealthy is very high. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Acts 20 and 24. However, I consider my wife, my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Quincy Jones said, every day my daddy told me the same thing. Once a task is just begun, never leave it until it's done. Be the labor great or small, do it well or not at all. Oh, I, like I like that. that. Very cool. Our question of the day comes from our sponsor, Neighborly. They are, they are uh, pretty incredible. They're your hub for home services. Take your home's efficiency and style to the next level with convenient solutions from Shelf Genie, Window Genie, and Glass Doctor. Visit Neighborly.com to schedule home service professionals near you. All right. Today's question of the day comes from Damien in Georgia. He says, I'm 45 years old and have $2,000 of debt. I'm thinking about using a debt relief program to help get rid of that debt. Is that a mistake? Now, uh, let's, let's talk about this. $2,000 of debt, 
I don't really know why you would need any type of consolidation for that unless maybe you there's a typo and you meant 20,000 or 200,000, no matter how much debt. Um, I would never go the consolidation route. Um, and for several reasons. Number one, you know, when people seek out consolidation, I think they're just kind of trying to hit that easy button and find an easy way out. And they end up, you know, shifting the debt around as opposed to actually paying it off. And it's one of those things that with those consolidation companies, they're calling up the credit card companies or they're they're making deals that you can actually call in and do yourself. You know, I remember when Sam and I were in debt, I'd call up the credit card companies and I'd try to get breaks on the interest and they do it. Or I'd try to move the payment date. You know, the 18th doesn't work for me. Can we move it to the third? All those things that they're doing for you, you can do that yourself and you don't need to pay somebody to do it. The other thing with those consolidation um, companies are, of course, they're taking all those debts. Maybe you've got 12 different ones and they're grouping it into one debt. And you're thinking, hey, I'm going to get a better interest rate on this. But that's not always the case because they're using your interest rate. It's consolidated at your interest rate based on your credit. And chances are, if you're to the point that you need a consolidation company or you think you do, your credit's probably tanked. And so that interest rate is probably going to be worse off than what you were before. Hey, Damon, your debt relief program is called Get a Job. Yeah, you got $2,000 of debt. $2,000. Okay, dude, seriously, go mow some grass. I got to believe this is a typo. $2,000? No, it's not. It's not. It's, it, but you're exactly right, Jay. The problem is that we're trying to look for a way to make this easy. And the way you pay off $2,000 is you go get $2,000. <laughs> That's how you do it. If my guy is 45 years old and is honestly thinking yeah. debt consolidation yeah. for $2,000. He is. He is. Damon, income. Go get some. Ooh, that's, that's the scary answer stuff. to your question. Joy's in Minneapolis. Hi, Joy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave and Dade. How are you? Great. How can we help? Well, I we're technically house poor with my irregular income, and we're so tired of being in debt. No, I mean, irregular I income doesn't make you house poor. Low income makes you house poor. Okay. So my job has super irregular hours in the winter, um, so my husband... With just his income, we're technically don't have enough income for our house. Or do you work or not? I do. Why can't uh, we, we count your income? Kids. Well, but just that it's really irregular. Well, I mean, how, how much do you make in a month? Um, last year I brought in twenty four thousand. In the year, okay. How much do you make yeah. in a month? Around two. Um. Around two, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's not what's causing your problem. It's the fact that you're not making money. So what's your husband well, I make? I have two kids that are... It's okay. What's your um, husband make? My husband make? made 56000 last year. Okay. And so you have a um, $80,000 household income. What's your house payment? Yes. Uh, eighteen oh six seventy one. Good Lord. Yeah. I know. It, yeah. Uh, we moved right when... The whole house thing fiasco. Yeah, but you bought a house you can't afford. Yeah, there's a... Yes. A joy, I'm hearing a lot of excuses. Every time Dave says something, you're going, yeah, but, well, but, and we had to do this, and we had to... I, I think you got to get it straight in your head what's really gone on, which is you've got the irregular income. You had the irregular income before you bought the house and you guys chose to buy a house and spend too much for it. I feel like you got to get that straight in your head because if you don't get those facts straight in your head, you're, we're not going to be able to solve any problems for yeah. you today. So one of two things is going to happen. Your all's income is going to go up dramatically in the next 24 months, or you're going to have to sell this house. You bought a house you can't afford. Okay. That's the numbers. I'm sorry. Um, but that, that you, you, it's killing you. That's why you called, wasn't it? I just, I don't know. I'm tired of being in debt. We are on step three. I understand. I understand. But the reason is the reason you're crying is you're starving to death. Mm -hmm. So if your irregular income was $24,000 in one month and nothing the rest of the year, and you use the 24, that's the most extreme irregular income I can think of, right? That's a lot of irregular um, and yeah. you could just spread out the 24,000 throughout the year and you put it with his 56, 
It doesn't pay this house payment, does it? Well, I crunched the numbers, and if we took, if we went gazelle intense for six years, we could pay Six years? Dollars. You can't hold off a 40% a payment that's 40% of your income. You can't do that for six years. Nope. It's going to blow up somewhere. Yeah. Something's going to happen, and there's going to be debt starting to pop up other places because you can't pay your bills. You can't eat. It's killing you. It's killing you. Is there a way that your 24K can increase or become? Or his. Yeah. Can we see Can we see either one of your incomes coming up dramatically? Um, Not his. He's already working 50, 60 hours a week. And yeah, I but is, can he change careers? Could he do something with this career that goes up? Um, not per se. I mean, I could work more days a week, but when we did that last year, our marriage almost ended. So. No. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's just a house, mm -hmm. a stupid house on every corner. I'm not putting my kids sure. or my marriage on the block of a stupid house. So y'all sit down and look at this tonight, okay, and just write it all out okay. and look at it and go, okay. I think this thing is taking more of our joy than it's adding because okay. I think that's what the math is telling me. I think it's stealing your, uh, you're, you're tired, you're stressed. Everything's got, there's no margin. Everything's, mm -hmm. is, is, everything's metal on metal. It's sparks. You know, there's no, there's no, there's nothing smooth anymore. It's all rough. Does that sound right? Um, I mean, I, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel when we finished step two. Like Six ago, years? But... Yeah. So your take-home pay on 80 is about 5K, and your payment's almost 2K. Did I miss something? Our taxable income, our taxable income last talking, year was 80, yeah. Yeah, I know, 80. It's your take-home pay be around 5. That sounds Probably. about right a month. I think so. Yeah. Like, yeah. You guys got to sit down and look at what you've got coming in because that's where all this is coming from. So I, I you can try whatever you want to try. You're grown ups, but you called us mm -hmm. and we're going to tell you, I, I wouldn't live with a house payment at 40 percent of my take home pay for five, for six years because that's a ticking time bomb. When the transmission goes on the car, you got no margin. When you need a new car and you got to save up and pay cash for it, you don't have the margin to do it. Mm -hmm. When the kid's sick, you don't have the margin to cover it. There's no margin. It's metal on metal. Everything's friction. Everything sparks. And um, it's just too short. And, and you know, I'm going to work overtime for a house only that I can't because I bought something I can't afford. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. Jade, good hour. Thanks for our good show, rather. Thanks for being with me. Good stuff. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. What's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.